Hello everyone, and welcome to Gravity Falls. Much like how I did with the Owl House, I'll be reviewing every episode, talking about it, all the references in the episode, how it connects to the greater story of the show, my own opinions, and for the four people who haven't seen Gravity Falls yet, I'll be keeping spoilers for the rest of the show to a minimum, and every so often you'll be seeing my OC slash Sona, whatever you want to call it, normally at the end of the video for my final thoughts, or when I don't know what else to show. Either way, Taurus Trapped is the first episode of Gravity Falls, airing all the way back June 15th, 2012, and was also given out on iTunes. In it, twins Dipper and Mabel, played by Jason Ritter and Kristen Shaw, are sent to Oregon to stay with their grand-uncle Stan for the summer. Dipper finds a mysterious journal showing that the town's a lot weirder. Mabel starts dating a guy, Dipper thinks he's a zombie, Mabel hopes he's a vampire, but turns out it's actually a bunch of gnomes. Shenanigans ensue. The episode's an adaptation of the unaired pilot, which I probably might do a video on later. Despite that, and this being an origin episode introducing everyone, this was actually the seventh episode produced. The cold opening of the episode shows Dipper and Mabel escaping from something in a golf cart, with narration by Dipper, which is not a normal thing, don't get used to that. But what you should get used to is the awesome intro. The song itself is a nice instrumental. It really fits the mystery theme of the show well. The visuals themselves are also really good, showing the kids arriving at the Mystery Shack, their Grand Uncle Stan's house and tourist trap, and seeing the bizarre natures of the town. And I love the shot of the campfire of all the main characters, because it really does just kind of capture these characters well, with Stan telling a spooky story just for a real spooky story with giant bat behind them. Sue seemingly believing the story, Mabel's just happy to be here, Dipper thinks it's interesting and wants to know more about the story, and Wendy's completely checked out. There's also a bunch of references within the intro, such as this giant lumberjack statue next to a gas station, which is a reference to Paul Bunyan, who is an American folk hero who's a giant lumberjack. He's normally depicted with Babe, his giant blue bull. Blinking you'll miss it, there's a single frame of Bigfoot. We see a bunch of photos, some of which are characters that may or may not be important later. We see a photo of two jackalopes. A jackalope is an American mythology beast thing that's basically a bunny with deer antlers. Below that we see an image of a character that resembles Alex Hirsch, the creator of the series and voice of Grunkle Stan and Zeus. This photo is a reference to Bat Boy, which is not even an internet meme, it's kind of like a newspaper meme. It's really old and weird. A Fiji mermaid is exactly what it sounds like, a weird gross sea creature. At the end of the intro we see a brief glimpse of this thing that may or may not be important. Yeah, probably not but it does make a really good window. After the intro, we get our only glimpse in the entire series of Dipper and Mabel's parents in their oddly pink home in probably California as they get shipped to Central Oregon. The main location of the show is Grand Uncle Stan's. The Mystery Shack is not just his home, it's also a roadside attraction showing fake mysteries and weird cryptics. The first line of a character and their introduction is usually a good encapsulation of that character, and I think Mabel, with being optimistic about getting splinters, is very Mabel of her. Also, I'm about 60% sure she has a Justin Bieber poster on her wall, because this show is old. For the rest of the series, Stan will be referred to as Grunkle Stan by Dipper and Mabel, but a few times Dipper does call him Grand Uncle in this episode. Despite this, I still see a lot of people get confused over what does Grunkle mean. It is not a play on Grumpy Uncle, it is a play on Grand Uncle. Your uncle is your parents' brother, and your grandpa is your parents' parents, so your Grand Uncle is your grandparents' brother. He also often wears a fez with a little crescent moon on it. He's not Muslim, he's wearing a Shriner's fez. It's meant to be a crescent moon as well as a scimitar and an Egyptian pharaoh death mask thing. Stan even has a banner of it hanging in the mystery shack. The Shriners are this kind of weird Masonic order thing. It's weird and full of a lot of conspiracy theories, much like this show. Despite this fact, a lot of places, including Disney Plus for a time, removed the symbol from his fez. We're introduced to Zeus the Handyman. He's well-meaning, but he's kind of off in his own world. She doesn't really do anything in this episode, but we are introduced to Wendy, the cashier girl, who's cool. On the cash register, we see 618. This is a reference to Alex Hirsch and his twin sister Ariel's birthday, June 18th, 1985. We'll see this number reappear throughout the series. And yes, Alex and Ariel Hirsch are the basis for Dipper and Mabel. We'll also see a reference to Piccola, which we'll be seeing in every episode of the series. 
It is named after Joe Pitt, a director and character designer for the show and several other series. When Bert goes to hang signs, he discovers a fake tree which leads him to discover a journal. It has a six-fingered hand on it and a number three. And inside the journal, it shows that the town's a lot weirder than first thought. In the pilot, the journal was actually a book called Dr. Crackpot's Book of the Damned. It has a big satanic pentagram on the back. The journal will go on to be one of the most important things in the series, which wasn't always the case for the series when Alex was writing. Mabel gets a new boyfriend, and via a leaf blower incident, she gives herself a smooch mark, which is a play on a hickey, which is a sort of bruise caused by intensive sucking or kissing. She was originally supposed to say hickey, but the Disney censorship says no. Keep this in mind, Alex vs. Disney censorship. This will be a running theme throughout the series. Another running theme throughout the series is Mabel having different sweaters. In every episode, she wears sometimes even multiple different sweaters. Like here, her purple meow wow cat sweater. In the opening, we see a Mabel sweater that lights up and somehow doesn't catch fire. Of course, her iconic shooting star this pale orange with a red sash thing in the middle, plus feather earrings, this aqua one with a flower on it, and not a sweater, but we do see that she's the type of girl that wears a big shirt to bed. Hers is lavender and has a floppy disk on it. We do get a bunch of references to gnomes throughout the episode. Actually, the gnome page looks a lot different than it does in the early promos for the episode. It might have been changed because Disney thought it was too scary, but then it was a very late change because it was still made it to the promos. But it seems to be a very, very late change because the first DVD for Gravity Falls that had the first six episodes on them had a little pamphlet of the journal. And it had the known page from the trailers and not the more cute one from the series. Maybe it was changed to make the gnomes seem less threatening of an idea for when they're revealed in the episode. Also, you people are super lucky that the show is streaming on Disney Plus now. It was so hard to watch stuff in the day before streaming. They would do stuff like that and just pack several episodes on a single copy. You have to wait till the entire show is done before you get a full series DVD. And sometimes you'll be lucky just to get that. This gnome, probably Steve, barfs rainbows. This is one of the most recognizable images from Gravity Falls. You can buy this on a lot of stuff, like backpacks and keychains and Funko Pops. Despite this, this is the only episode where this happens. The gnomes hold down Mabel, kind of like Gulliver's Travels. The gnomes want Mabel to be their new queen. This leads into the big chase at the beginning of the episode. Dipper loses his hat. They make it back to the mystery shack. Hey, who's that guy in the background? Using the leaf blower from earlier, Mabel shoots off Jeff, the main gnome, which causes the rest to scatter. Mabel cosplays as Anne from Amphibia, and Grunkle stands aside to be nice for a change and gives the twins a gift. Dipper gets a new hat, which will become his iconic hat for the rest of the series. And I will have a... Grappling hook! Legend of Zelda pose. Yes! Wouldn't you rather have, like, a doll or something? Grappling hook! Fair enough. Fairy Mabel. Dipper writes in the journal about his experiences in this episode. And later at night, Grunkle Stan enters a code to the vending machine and goes into a secret room. And that pyramid from earlier appears on the carpet. Instead of an end credits song, the end credits play below a clip. For this episode, it's the Barfing Gnome. Also, Jason Ritter is credited as Jason Morgan in this episode and a few of the first couple episodes. This is because of some weird union BS. Also, Morgan is his middle name and his mother's maiden name. At the very end of the credits, we see a scrambled code. Because if you listen to the theme song, at the very end of the theme song, you hear a backwards message of Alex Hirsch saying three letters back. This is a cipher code. So we take the letters three letters back, and we can read Welcome to Gravity Falls. This is a very solid start to the series. The characters are already really likable. Mabel's fun and Dipper's interested in the mysteries of the world, just like the audience is. The supporting characters don't have a whole lot to do in this episode, but we do have a good introduction to them. It's a pretty good start to the series that sets up the mysteries for the rest of the show and introduces the characters to us. A solid seven. I wouldn't be surprised if the man of my dreams walked through that door right now. 
Uh, oh, 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 not good. Ow. Oh, why? <laughs>